So today's the, the day before, the last Sunday before Thanksgiving, and um, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what is, we're not in a series and we're headed into one shortly, but um, I said, God, what would you have me uh, to say to your people today? And, um, and I couldn't get away from just Thanksgiving and, and how do I say thank you? Um, because I guess there's nothing that bothers me more than an ungrateful spirit. Um, because if I'm ungrateful, it, it almost screams that I think I'm owed whatever you just gave me. Someone handed me a birthday gift just a moment ago out in the, the hallway. And the first thing I'm going to say is thank you. I appreciate you thinking. And I would never dream of taking a gift or whatever it is and just walking away as if you owed it to me. Are, are you hearing me? And I want to give you, I want to unpack this, if I may, this morning when, in this message called, How Do I Say Thank You? And the first thing I want you to know is that when we are thankful and when we express our gratitude, when, when we share our gratefulness, it garners more blessings. I mean, you think about it, the source of that blessing, whether it's your father, uh, whether it's a cousin, a friend, <clears throat> and they do something for you when you are grateful. There's something, you know, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And, and I think a lot of that happens in my heart personally when I see the gratefulness of someone that says, man, I, I needed a miracle and, uh, you know, God has come through and I'm very grateful for it. On the other hand, it, it kind of rubs me the wrong way if there is no gratefulness or no appreciation. Am I in the boat by myself today or is, do you have some sentiments like that as well? So when we're thankful, that's going to uh, garner or endure us for more of the blessings that are going to come our way. On December 21st, 1620, the voyaging Mayflower dropped anchor at Plymouth uh, Bay. Captain Christopher Jones at the helm. It had been a grueling voyage, taking a 120-ton capacity ship 66 days to make the perilous crossing. There had been disease and anxiety and childbirth among the 102 courageous passengers. And furthermore, they arrived uh, in a bleak New England shore during the hard winter. And ultimately, that winter claimed half of the 102 souls on board. However, when the spring came and the captain of the Mayflower offered a free passage to anyone who came over, he said, I will not charge you anything to ferry you back if you want to go. Not one single person took him up. Not one. The fidelity of the 41 men who still aboard the Mayflower had signed the famous Mayflower Compact, uh, uh, beginning with the words, In ye name of God... Amen. Was taking on a visible meaning. These chivalrous souls had dedicated themselves to the total cause of freedom. They had come to the wilderness to carve out a better way of life. Faith had prompted the voyage, and faith sustained the pilgrims, and their religious convictions constrained them to raise their voices in praise. Their hardships, their sacrifice, their devotion, their concept of government and rule, the, the vigorous uh, religion they had, and all of that reminds us of why they sought this country. And then they prepared a feast of what you and I now call Thanksgiving. Now, 169 years later, President George Washington, following their example and his own conviction... On October the 3rd, 1789, um, he issued a thanksgiving proclamation designating, now it, it had not become a holiday at that time, but he said, the people of the United States, a day of 
public thanksgiving is to be held on the Thursday, the 26th day of November, 1789, making the first national celebration of a holiday that has become commonplace in today's household. There's the actual uh, article. Uh, you may have trouble reading it, but know it's there. And so during the Revolutionary War, which Washington was fighting, he would oftentimes order a special day of thanksgiving following a military victory. He would just pass down the order and say, tomorrow will be a day of thanksgiving and we will thank God for going to battle with us. I long for those kind of leaders. Does anybody with me say Amen. He would order certain times and, and say uh, uh, for the successful battles, as well as publicly endorse efforts by the Continental Congress to proclaim days of thanks, not just a day, but, but days of thanks, usually in recognition of a military victory uh, of themselves and their allies. Notice this, 75 years later, after 1789, in the middle of the, the America's bloodiest war ever. In the middle of the Civil War, when more than a half million people lost their lives, and I believe they said it was about 2% of the entire population in that time. In fact, nearly as many men died in captivity during the Civil War as were killed in the whole of the Vietnam War. Hundreds of thousands died of disease and roughly 2% of the population. An estimated 620,000 men lost their lives in the line of duty. They say if you were to compare it to our size today versus then, it would be about 6 million lives lost. And so uh, in the middle of this bloodbath, where President Lincoln is trying to preside over a nation that's torn in half. You've got the Union, and, and, and then, you, you know, then you have the South. And the North and South is against each other. It's a bloodbath, man. And he's trying to, to piece this thing back together. But in the middle of all of this hell on earth, on October 3rd, the exact same day, uh, some years, 75 years later, 1863, uh, for, for Washington, and uh, Lincoln would proclaim and announce that they would celebrate the official Thanksgiving on November, or on Thursday, November 26th, 1863. So in the middle of all of that, when more men has died than ever before, when disease is rampant, when, when families are torn asunder and their sons are going to fight and many not coming home, he decides now is a good time for us to pause and just say, thank you, Lord. What a time. What a time for, you see, now, now I told you when we give thanks, that garners more blessings from the Lord. But right now they're in the middle of hell on earth. And he decides we're going to give thanks right now. And then he proclaimed and it became, if you will, a, a national holiday that we would set aside that last Thursday or, or the third Thursday, I, no fourth Thursday, I believe it is, in November to return thanks to God. So why is it important? Why is it important to, to, uh, for us to know that when we offer thanks, it garners more blood. Because here, here's the thing. We, we got to understand that thanksgiving and gratefulness is the key to future blessings. We have to know. Now let me read something for you. Uh, in Psalm 116, verse 12 through 17, the question is asked, what can I offer the Lord for all that he has done for me? What can I offer the Lord for all that he's done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. Man, we got something to be thankful for, right? I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. So I'm going to accept this salvation. I'm going to live this saved life. And he says, I'm going to keep my promises. In other words, my vows to God 
I'm going to keep them. He says the Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. King James said, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. He said, but the Lord cares deeply for us. And he said, oh, Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I'm your servant. Born into your household. You, watch this. Here's another Thanksgiving note. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless your name. I'm going to praise your name. I'm going to thank you, and I'm going to be grateful because you have freed me from my chains. Now, I find it amazing that President uh, Washington fighting the Revolutionary War and President Lincoln fighting the Civil War could in the middle of that say, we're going to write something that says we are thankful to God in the midst of this. But then I read in the Bible when it said, give thanks in all things. That we're to be thankful for, for every day. That we're to give thanks even in bad situations because it, here's the deal. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. The only time you lose really is if you don't learn. If you fail and then don't learn anything else about why it didn't work out, then you kind of lose there. But, but sometimes we win, sometimes we learn, but in all things, let us be grateful. In all things, let us give thanks. Well, all right, let's go. In the world today, people have lost that sense of gratitude. They've lost that sense of thanksgiving. I've seen people be handed hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars and never utter a word. And you see what happens is this. The moment, uh, let me give you an example. A, a, a pastor friend said that he was trying to live on his budget and he said, I wanted the new iPhone. Now, this one's a few years old, just so you know. But no, he said, I wanted the new iPhone. He said, and I, I just didn't want to spend the money. I didn't, I didn't want to do that. He said, but I wanted that. He said, but he, here's the thing. I would, I would think about the new iPhone and what all it would do. And, I, I, I would, and every time I thought about it and how great the new one was, I have devalued the one God has already given me. He said, the one I've already got, It'll still make phone calls. It'll receive phone calls. It'll do emails. It'll do text. It'll alert me. It, it, it'll do messenger. It'll do everything. I just want the latest greatest. He said, in the moment that I get caught up in having to have the latest and greatest, I am unthankful and devalue what God has already given me. I notice his home because it's hit us all, you know, at some point or another. You know, and there are times where your equipment's going to wear out and you're going to have to replace it. And there's going to be times where your vehicle wears out and whatever. But many times, and I would say, uh, if not most times, we often get so enamored with having to have the latest and the greatest. If we're not careful, we will hold up that thing. And, and by the way, the brand new one's going to get old. The brand new one's going to get a cracked screen one day. The brand new one's going to get a bug one day and, and all of that, but we just get enamored with, I got to have this. And if we're not careful, we lose our gratefulness and thankfulness to God for what he's already given us. So think about a house. We, we, we have a beautiful house. We have a beautiful home. We have what God has provided for us, but sometimes it's never enough. Y'all getting quiet on me now. It's never enough. We've got to have another. We've got to have another. We've got to have this. got to have that. And I'm not against prospering. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying we need to pause long, long enough to be grateful that God has given us a job. It might not be the best job in the world, but you do have a job. So, but in the world today, we've lost that. And you know what puzzles me as I was in my office this week and I was writing and I said, you know, why is it especially... And I love our young people, don't get me wrong, y'all know that. But I need to coach you right here. And that is you always express gratitude. I don't care if it's mama that gave you something or grandpa or if it's a friend or, or, or a colleague or a worker. I can remember working in the grocery store when Thanksgiving come along and they just gave us a fruit basket. I was always taught to say thank you. 
It might not have cost them that much money, but they thought about me. And when you express your gratitude, something happens in the source. Something happens and says, I want to bless him more because I saw the way his eyes lit up and how grateful he was and how thankful he was when I gave him this. And uh, on the other hand, if we're not grateful at all, um, we have a spoiled brat mentality. Did I say that? Uh, I had a friend of mine that was talking about his little girl, and she knew what she wanted for her birthday. But at the birthday party, when she opened the gift, it wasn't what she wanted, and a sour look come across her face. And she just expressed, because she had no filter, like sometimes three-year-olds can have no filter, or five-year-olds, absolutely no filter, I don't want this. I wanted that or whatever. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now think about how this plays in the mind of the Lord. Uh, it doesn't bode well for us. So, so just let me, I, I suppose there's nothing that gnaws at me anymore than an ungrateful heart or an unthankful attitude. So then what is it we need to do? So we know that when we do offer thanks and we do say thank you and we're grateful. We know that garners more and, and, and we understand that it is the key to future blessings. Now, let me ask you this. As a parent, if you go the extra mile to do something special for your child and they don't even acknowledge it, are you really going to work overtime for the next six months to try to make it happen again? Probably not. Anyway, enough of that. So what is it that we must do? We must learn to express our thanks. We must learn to express our gratitude. I'm thinking of David when he brought the Ark of the Covenant back from Obed-Edom's house. I don't know if you remember, but, but um, uh, it was a hard, arduous journey. And God had told them particularly how to do it. And if you remember... Um, uh, there was a guy by the name of Uzzah that reached out to stable the ark because it was being drawn by uh, mules and, and, and they hit a pothole and it stumbled. And as it was beginning to tump over, Uzzah reached out and touched the ark of the covenant and <laughs> fell dead. David cried out to God and said, God, you're too hard. And God says, I've told you that. I, listen, God says, I don't need to be propped up by anybody. I don't need to be held up by anybody. I'm God all by myself. I give you the prescription. So you know what David did? He, he got back to his uh, mind and to his office of that day. And he said, I know what I'm going to do. And, and, and he began to get together the sacrifices. And he said, what's going to happen now? We're going to pull the Ark of the Covenant just like God said. And every six steps... Every six steps, we're going to stop and slaughter a bull and offer sacrifice and praise to God all the way back to Jerusalem. And, when we, and I'm telling you, they did that. And by the time he got to Jerusalem, he done danced clean out of his clothes. And man, he, he absolutely cut the rug that day. He danced before the Lord with all of his might in thanksgiving and honor and blessing for giving him safe passage on the way home with the presence of God. And God wants us to express our our gratitude. I, you know, something I was telling our staff the other day, we had a meeting. I said, sometimes we don't celebrate victories good enough because we are so hard on ourselves as a staff. I'm not talking about you guys as the staff. We, we, we look at that video of the blessing boxes and we ask ourselves, how could we do it better? We look at that ride, we say, how could we do it better? And we hold ourselves under a microscope so much to make sure that we can squeeze everything out of every dollar and that we can be better than we were last year. And, 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 but many, many times we, we fail to realize there's very few that are doing it at that level, period. I know that sounded arrogant. I didn't mean it arrogant, but... And if you know me, you know that. But we just need to say, you know what? God has blessed us. We've come a long way, baby. We've done it. And so sometimes we just got to look back and say, you know what? Thank God I ain't where I used to be. God has truly helped me. And, and we can, can we just practice for a moment? Just close your eyes with me and say, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings on me. God, I've oftentimes been calloused to the bountiful blessings you've bestowed upon me. And I've had a roof over my head, and I've had shoes on my feet. I've had food on my table. I've had all these things, but we live in a world and a society that says you've got to have more. You have to have this toy and that toy and whatever. And if we're not careful, we'll get beyond uh, ourselves we got to understand that God wants us to be grateful. I'm going to tell you this. I, you practice this. If you will be grateful and express thanksgiving to God for what he's already given you, you set yourself up for the manifold blessings of the Lord. Let me try to tie this up. Amen. Let's go ahead and give him praise if we're going to do it. So here's what I'm saying. When God does something for you, and God does something for us every day. I mean, every single day. But let's don't, let's don't run by the opportunity for us to, to put our praise on. You know what? We have a praise and worship night every now and then around here. Just a night of worship, night of praise. And you know, if uh, you remember when, when uh, Tennessee beat Alabama. Y'all remember that? It was just a few weeks back. They got so carried away, I don't know if they were just carried away or drunk, but they tore their own goalposts down and threw them in the Tennessee River. Are you with me? But I'm telling you, they stormed the field, and, and then, then we stormed the field when we beat Alabama the next week too, but we didn't tear our own goalposts down. Are you, but what I'm saying is, in, in something like that, and we love football and y'all love it and all that stuff, and, and, and we cried together when Camden lost to Grayson the other night, but nonetheless, uh, what I'm saying is, is we don't mind putting it on. We'll shout. Kirby Smart said, if you can talk when you leave Sanford Stadium, you didn't shout loud enough. And we'll go out there and shout our minds, our, our head off, right? I remember when the Braves won the World Series last year, man, we come and unglued. How much more should we get beside ourselves and could care less? We, we shouldn't care what the world thinks when we bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me for all of his bountiful and manifold blessings that he has bestowed upon us. We shouldn't care what the world says. I'm going to get my worship on. You don't have to come here to get it on. You can get out in the front yard. You can be cutting grass. You, man, I've had to pull my truck over on the side of the road. It was either that or the Holy Ghost driving. I wasn't sure if he was. Y'all with me? So anyway, but don't let anybody stop your praise. Don't let anybody take away your grateful spirit. When God's done something for you, Man, you shout it from the house. Up. That's why I said to every single body that asked me about the ride, I tell them a little bit about the ride. I said, but the most notable miracle is the weatherman all over South Georgia, all over the state showed uh, green everywhere, 90% rain, and God said it ain't going to rain on them. And you'll never convince me otherwise that it wasn't the mighty hand of God that held it away for us to get through there. My, 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 my. So show your, uh, uh, show your praise. Express and demonstrate your gratefulness. Show your appreciation. Here's a poem I want to share with you. It says, thanks to God for my Redeemer. Thanks to God for my Redeemer. Thanks for all thou dost provide. Thanks for the times now but a memory. Thanks for Jesus by my side. Thanks for... For pleasant, balmy springtime, thanks for dark and dreary fall. Thanks for the tears by now forgotten. Thanks for the peace within my soul. Thanks for the prayers that thou hast answered, and thanks for that that thou dost deny. Thanks for the storms that I have weathered, and thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for the pain, and thanks for the pleasure. Thanks for the comfort in despair. Thanks for the grace that none can measure, and thanks for the love beyond compare. In all things, give him thanks. So, so, so why do we need to do this? We need to do this because we should always honor 
the source of our blessing. Now, obviously, the source of our blessing is God. But it might be that God used some old man to just put his arm around you and say, I'm going to speak at the business meeting for you. And then he said a couple words and you got the job that everybody said you wasn't ever going to get. Maybe, maybe it was an aunt that, that passed and left you in her will. And you can't say thanks to her because she's gone. But you can say thanks to God. You can say thanks to the family. You always should be grateful and honor the source of your blessing. I'll tell you, I, I try every time we come to this pulpit. I, I tell everybody when we do training for people that come here, whether they're coming to receive the offering, especially if they're coming to receive the offering, we say, we want you to thank the people of God that sacrifice and give to make this ministry possible. Now, I'm not saying that God would not bring it in another way, but I don't ever want to be the one that is, that is calloused and feels like I've got everything figured out and I don't need anybody. I want to say I'm grateful for your confidence, not in me, but your confidence in God and what he's allowing me to do. And the ministry of this church that is literally impacting the world. I, I, I got a couple things and we'll, we'll close. But whether it's a brother or a sister, a friend or a neighbor, you should always express your thanksgiving and gratefulness. Demonstrate it. <clears throat> Ephesians 5 and 18 says, do not be drunk with wine because it'll ruin your life. <clears throat> Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs in yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Watch this. And give thanks for everything to God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got a new job, give him thanks. A trip got canceled, give him thanks. Because you might have lost your life on that trip. You don't ever know. But we have to believe that God works all things together for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. The next passage of Scripture I think is so important, 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. He says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and bread to eat. Think about this. God, I want you to watch this. God provides seed to the farmer. And don't, don't you lose your cool now because we've already received the offering. God gives the seed to the farmer. You still got to plant it though. The farmer still got to go plant it. He's got the seed. It's in the, it's in the barn. Go plant it. And then bread to eat. In the same way he will, watch this, this is so important. Don't miss this. In the same way he will provide increase, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when you take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Look at me for a moment. 400 and some odd boxes, I can't remember. What an amazing, amazing thing. You know, I was telling my dad, because we went to Woodbine and then we left and come to Camden. And I said, Dad, you know what? We got two more sites going on. They're in Folkestone, and we were in Folkestone last year. And I said, they're also in St. Mary's. God blesses us. Notice what he said. He said, he will provide and increase your resources. We didn't just come up with 430 some odd boxes. You bought a grocery list and put them in them boxes. And not only that, you gave money to the church to help buy turkeys. And then you that own businesses, many of you got to the tune nine or ten thousand dollars, I don't remember exactly. You gave money to help us buy the turkey so that we could complete the boxes. And and uh, and what I want you to know is God's gonna provide and increase your resources. And you hear me now, next year we'll do over 500 boxes. We will. And I 
know you're, you're probably saying, well, you know, some people probably didn't need that. I don't even worry about that. That's, that ain't for me to decide. I'm being generous and God is going to bless it and the word is getting out. People are like, how, how are you doing this? I, I'm not. Uh, I had very little to do with it, to be honest with you. Maybe sign a few checks. I really didn't even do that. Uh, Tanya about signed good as me now. But <laughs> we had the meetings and, and leaders stepped up. Just, just leaders stepped up and made it happen. And God increases our resources to produce a great harvest of generosity in you. That's what it is, a a harvest of generosity. Yes, and you'll be enriched in, watch this, not just finances, but you'll be enriched in every way. Somebody say that with me. In every way. You'll be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. Woo! So it's not, well, we did it this time, baby. No, God's going to continue to bless you. And when we, when we render unto God what is God's and we give to people who cannot give back and we do all that stuff, God just has a way of blessing you. And it's not just your finances. He said in every way. And then when we take these gifts to those in need, they'll thank God. So you know what? I know that uh, our children and, our, and you and every, y'all put the boxes in there and they said thank you. But you know what we are? We are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And what they're doing is they're saying, thank you, Lord, because this representative of the Lord's church has given me something to eat this month. Come on, give the Lord praise, would you? Stand with me if you will. He provides seed, but we have to plant it. The, the, the blessing boxes is a tremendous example of that. So I want you to understand this, and, and we'll pray. Paul is saying to his readers that God provides the seed for the sower and will multiply their seed and increase their harvest. What he's saying is because of what we do, God will increase your harvest. Here's what the world says. The world says if you've got $5 and you give away two of them, you have three left. But no, no, it, the math works different in the kingdom of God. How is it? I, I don't know, but I know there's a story where the Bible says God gave one man five talents. This is a measure of gold. He, five talents. He gave another one three and another one one. He said the man with five went and he began to use that and make money. And he increased it and gained five more. And the guy that had uh, three, he, he increased his and, and gained three more. The guy who had one, he said, he's a hard man. He's an austere man. Uh, I think I'm just going to take what he gave me, and I'm going to be a good steward. I, I'm just going to put it in a box. I'm going to put it in a napkin. I'm going to cover it over in the earth and make sure nothing happens to it. And that's what, for, for us, many times we say, well, take my little nest egg. This is all I got. I want to make sure nothing happens to it. No, 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 no. The Bible said when he came back, he asked the guy, he said, what'd you do? He said, well, I took the five you gave me and I went and spent it and I used it and invested it. And now I got five more. Now I got 10. Uh-huh. He said, man, that's amazing. He said, well, what'd you do? He said, well, I took what you gave me and I've doubled it and I've got this. And he turns to this guy and he says, well, I knew you were a hard man. And uh, bottom line is he was lazy and he didn't have the faith to believe that God would bless what he had. Woo, Lord. So he said, I went and hid it. And you know what the Bible said he did? He said he took what he had from him and gave it to the man that had 10. I'm telling you, the math works different in the kingdom of God. When we're faithful to God and you say, well, we've only got five, but we do something great, God multiplies it back again and again. So watch this. Yes, go ahead and praise him. So, in this context, the meaning seems to be that God will multiply the material resources of the Corinthian church. And as they use their, their, use their, their resources to meet the needs of the Judean Christians, he will increase the effect 
of that righteous deed. The Corinthians, by making a monetary gift, will sow the seed, but God would increase the effect of that righteous deed so that it produces a rich harvest of unity and love and thanksgiving. So when we do what we do, you and I are going to receive again and again and again. It may, may not be money. It may be people and souls. I, I don't know. But you cannot be grateful and thankful and expressive about it without God not returning it to you. Let me pray this blessing over you. Adam, can you sing something for us? Lord, I just pray right now for your people. Some of them have gone beyond the pale, beyond the scope of what they were really able to do. They did two boxes. They could really only afford to do one, or they did seven and really couldn't afford but three or four. But God, I take you at your word right now because you said that when we do that and we're generous, you'll turn and make all things work and that you'll make us generous and that you will increase our resources. So Lord, across this congregation today, increase the resources of your people that we might be the hands and feet of Jesus in Camden County and around the world. God, as you increase our resources, Lord, I commit to you that we'll be mindful of the poor and the needy. And we'll stand in the gap and we'll make up the hedge. We'll be there. God, if you'll provide for us, we'll provide for them. In the name of Jesus.